Well, howdy there, Eric and Allie. Oh, hey. So what are we shooting today? This one? Nope. Oh. This one. Nope. Hmm. This one? No, not that one. Uh oh, oh, I know. This one. Nope, that was last week. So what are we shooting today? Over there, look, it's coming. Good day folks, welcome back to my channel and as always, thank you so much for watching. As you know, I don't usually do unboxing videos and today is no different. I do however want to open up this box together that I just received from Mercury Rise as we'll be reviewing its contents. But don't worry, it's gonna be fast. So what do we have here? Look at that guys, we have some spiked ammo which we'll get to in a second we have some powder torpedoes some extra magazines but mainly ladies and gentlemen we have the tr-50 original version and the new tr-50 15 joules version So with these, my friends, we kind of go back to the origins of this channel. As many of you know, it all started with less lethal launchers, just like this one. In fact, this channel was one of the very first to bring you the TR-50 or Torpedo Revolver when it came out last year. And this time, I also hope to be among the first to announce the new TR-50 or Torpedo Revolver 15 Joules. As you know, this gun is a direct competitor to Umarex's HDR-50. And for those who saw my comparison videos, you saw that the HDR-50 was always a bit more powerful than the torpedo revolver in most of the tests. And although even Umarex is coming out with newer, more powerful generations of its HDR-50, Mercury Rise, the California-based brand, seems to have decided to rectify that by making a more powerful version of their own. And here it is. Also, very importantly, if you already own a torpedo revolver, well, you don't need to go out and buy yourself a new one. You can just get a new upgraded valve and switch it yourself, just like people do with the good old HDR50. Now, for those of you who are seeing these for the very first time, well, these are CO2 powered 50 caliber paintball revolver style launchers designed to shoot a variety of projectiles at higher speeds than your regular paintball launcher and thus are considered to be a less lethal alternative for home defense, especially in countries where firearms are not allowed. So how did the new torpedo revolver revolutionize the globally popular Umarex HDR-50? Well, simply by enlarging the magazines to double the size. This magazine revolutionized everything as we went from shooting ammo like this to the new possibility of shooting stuff like this. This, my friends, is Mercury Rise factory ammo. 
These are the new 50 caliber steel tip darts and gasket. Look at these things. They come in a jar of 100 or in a tube of 12. These things are fierce looking and they're also very, very light. They weigh only 1.29 grams. So just under one and a half grams. And again, they are the dart plus the gasket, which can come apart if you like. So these things just click perfectly into the magazine and they fit wonderfully. Very tight. Oh, I can't wait to shoot them. All right, so we loaded our darts into the magazine. We then load the magazine into the gun, lock it in place, and we are almost ready to shoot. As I said, these guns are powered by CO2, by these 12 gram CO2 cartridges, uh, which go into the handle of the gun into the CO2 compartment of the grip, inside of the grip. Now, the maker, like all makers, suggests, and I learned this from Rune Rebel and his YouTube channel, which if you don't know him yet, do go check him out. Uh, I consider him one of the maestros of air guns. Um, anyway, all makers suggest to always put one single drop of silicone oil or gun lube on the tip of your CO2 cartridge. You then stick the CO2 cartridge inside of the CO2 compartment, butt first, and screw it in there. Now, we have a CO2 cartridge inside of the gun, the ammo is inside of the gun. However, if we pull the trigger, nothing happens. That is because the gun has not been armed yet, or the CO2 cartridge has not been pierced yet. Why is that? Well, the whole philosophy behind the home defense uh, of these guns is that you can put this gun in a drawer or in a safe uh, for a very long time. Uh, there will be no leaking because the CO2 is nice and, and, and concealed inside of the CO2 cartridge. At the moment of need, all we have to do is bump right here and the CO2 cartridge will be pierced and the gun will be ready to shoot. So again, you can keep this a long time without leak, and when you're ready, ready to shoot. This gun also comes with a safety button, which I really, really like. And now my friends, let's head outside and shoot this thing. All right, folks, let's start today's tests with this 10% ballistic gel block. It's a small one uh, cooked by me. Um, and this test will be shooting both guns, both versions, the older 11 joules version and the newer 15 joules version. I won't be shooting both guns in every test, uh, but this is a good uh, way to see, clearly see the difference between the two guns. Obviously, they both have the same ammo. We're gonna shoot the red uh, darts. And uh, I also have this kind of measured uh, board underneath it so we can see exactly how many inches uh, each projectile will go in. Uh, we, are, we will be shooting from about uh, 20 feet, 15, 20 feet, also because these guns are not very accurate, at least that's my experience. So it is hard for me to hit a target accurately from more than 15, 20 feet.
right, folks, a bit of a ballistic shit show here. Um, I tried to, so these are the, the, the 15 joules version rounds, while more over here to the left is the regular version. Um, I missed a few times. Uh, in fact, not all of them did penetrate. So hard to see really uh, the difference in power with this ballistic gel. We'll, uh, we'll see more of that with the chrono test between the two guns. Nevertheless, the projectiles did enter. Let's see, this one seems to be the one that entered the deepest. So four inches into a 10% ballistic gel, although this didn't really go through. So let's do this one. This was smack in the middle. So let's say three and a half inches into uh, this 10% ballistic gel, which is not bad at all. I'm loving this ammunition right here. Um, however, I would recommend to maybe glue the gasket to the dart uh, because they do tend to come apart and they will jam your gun. Um, so again, maybe a little bit of glue, put them together would not definitely hurt. All right, folks, let's continue with our penetration testing. Uh, this time with some hard surface as we have four quarter inch plywood boards nicely fixed onto our tunnel of destruction so-called by me this time we'll only shoot the brand new uh, mercury rise tr50 15 joules and we'll switch we'll change up the ammo this time we'll use italian brand cododo nine millimeter sabot bullets now these things are pretty heavy they weigh uh pretty much eight and a half grams so they are eight times heavier than the previous ammo but let's see how many of these boards will penetrate. Well, my friends, it doesn't seem like we went too far as we penetrated somewhat only the first quarter inch board. One of the things Mercury Rise is the most proud of are these, the Torpedo Revolver Pepper Balls, which contain a lot more powder than your regular 50 caliber pepper ball. Now, these are not actual pepper torpedoes. Those have a red cap on them. Uh, these with a blue cap are actually regular powder balls. I do not want to start spreading <laughs> that nasty stuff all over my backyard. So we'll be shooting these, which are actually made for practicing uh, as they act the same way uh, visually, uh, have the same effect on the target. Now back to our darts with some close range accuracy testing. This will be our bullseye. Well, well, not too shabby. 
considering that I was saying how non-accurate these guns are. So this was from about 25 feet under 10 meters. Uh, but again, we got two, almost right in the bullseye or three. To the moment of truth, how powerful is our new TR50 15 joules? And how much more powerful is it than its original predecessor? To find out, we'll be shooting these ASIL selling 50 caliber rubber steel balls. Uh, very common, you find them on Amazon, you find them everywhere. Um, very lightweight. We will put them through the chronograph and measure their speed in feet per second, after which we'll calculate the joules power of each gun. Well, that was an interesting chrono test. Uh, both guns pretty much gave out very, very similar numbers. If not even the, the older version, the, the less powerful version had stronger uh, numbers, bigger numbers than the brand new, more powerful version. Now I'll say this, uh, I've been shooting the new, more powerful version all day long while I have not been shooting much out of the older version. As you know, the CO2, uh, freezes uh, and it makes the inter internals of the gun very very cold so the more you shoot these actually the weaker they become just because everything becomes cold inside uh, everything freezes inside all the metal components uh, so maybe that is why uh, again this gun was too cold uh, um, and and by the time we got to the chrono test um, it is very hot outside It is about 30 degrees celsius mid 80s Fahrenheit so it is very hot as you know CO2 expands uh, or all gases expand with heat and thus the, the hotter it is the more powerful uh, the, 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 these guns are however the more you shoot them the more cold they become the weaker they are so I guess once again that is why indeed the gun was weaker anyway regardless what do you do with the gas left in the gun when you're done shooting well, very simply, you degas it by twisting. Your knob here. And you're ready to change your CO2. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for clicking that like button if you did indeed like this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And I'll see you at the next one.